Hello everyone and welcome to the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. My name is Karen. I am a conservation interpreter and I'm part of the zoo's education department. I want to thank you all for joining us for our seal and sea lion presentation today. And I especially want to thank you all for your continued support of our local zoo. And of course for our Fresno County residents for your vote in favor of Measure Z. Sea Lion Cove is the very first exhibit made possible entirely through the funds provided by Measure Z. So everything you are seeing here today has been made possible thanks to all of your support. Sea Lion Cove is modeled after Point Lobo State Park located off of our own coast of California. This beautiful exhibit contains just over 200,000 gallons of water and it is home to four California sea lions and two Pacific Harbor seals. Now some of the friends who you can, be swimming, who you can see swimming in Sea Lion Cove throughout the day are for example, our largest sea lion on exhibit, who is Wishbone. Wishbone weighs in at right around 300 pounds. Now, he is also one of our rescues here at the zoo. He was found stranded on shore in not very good shape. Rescuers took him in, and during the process of rehabilitation, they realized that Wishbone was actually born blind. Due to a genetic defect, he does not have any eyes at all, so he cannot see. Now what this means is that Wishbone's mom did a very good job taking care of him as he grew up and when it was time for him to take care of himself, he was unable to do so because it was difficult for him to find food for himself and instead he was found stranded. Now the rescuers after rehabilitating him relocated him here to Sea Lion Cove with us where he has a wonderful professional team to care for him. Now next in contrast to Wishbone is going to be our smallest sea lion on exhibit instead, who is our friend Little Sir. Now Little Sir weighs in at right around 100 pounds, but she is very spunky and very energetic, so don't let her size or her name fool you. Throughout her training sessions, she likes to make sure that you get to see all of that energy that she has. Now as I mentioned, we do have two Pacific Harbor Seals here at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. Their names are Ariel and Jetta. Now one thing that you're going to notice between both of our seals is that they look a lot alike. Now, if you ever have the opportunity to see both of their bellies compared one side to the other, in our underwater viewing area, you're gonna notice that Ariel has a much lighter belly with a lot more gray. It looks like if someone just took a little bit of paint and splattered it up and down her belly with the gray being very prominent. Now, on the other hand, our friend Jetta, she has a much darker, darker belly with a lot of darker spots. So remember, the lighter belly is our friend Ariel and the darker belly is our friend Jetta the seals and the sea lions is that while both species look a lot alike this is because they're both part of the same animal group called pennipeds meaning wing footed or feather footed now both of these animals share a lot of things in common along with their one more member of this group which is the walrus which looks a lot like our seals and sea lions but they also have very very large tusks at the front of their face now seals sea lions and walruses share a lot of things in common the very first is going to be their blubber. Everybody here has a nice thick layer of fat right under their skin that helps keep them nice and warm because the waters that they swim in are very cold, kind of like a built-in sweatshirt for you and I. Now the next thing that everybody here shares in common is going to be, well, their whiskers. If you look at the front of everyone's face today, you're going to notice that everybody here is sporting a very nice mustache. No, not mine. There's my friends. Everybody here has a nice set of whiskers at the very front of their face that are used for navigation. Now in the case of my friend Wishbone, if you wondered how he is able to maneuver around his exhibit with the rest of his friends without ever bumping into anything, well the answer are these whiskers which are called vibrissae. Their vibrissae are so sensitive that they can pick up ripples in the water that let them know where things are located, which means that they can be used for navigation so that the animals can get around much easier and that is how Wishbone is able to swim with the rest of his friends very easily. Now the very last thing that all seals, sea lions, and walruses share in common is going to be, well, their flippers. Their flippers is also how they get around. Now their flippers is also going to be the very first way how you are going to learn how to tell a seal apart from a sea lion. Now in the case of my friend Wishbone and Little Sir, they are sea lions and therefore they have very large front flippers. Those large front flippers are used in the water to propel themselves forward and on land they can actually maneuver very easily. Sea lions can actually move on land about as quickly as you and I can. And this is thanks to the combination of their large flippers with their back rotating hip, which makes movement very easy on land. Now on the other hand, and in the case of our Pacific Harbor Seal friends, Ariel and Jetta, well, they do not have a back rotating hip. They also have very, very short front flippers. Now, what this means is that when they move on land, they don't look as gracious as our sea lion friends do. Instead, they have to scoot along on their belly, kind of doing like a worm movement. Now, that interesting little movement is called galumping, and that is what a seal walk is called. 
Now the next way to tell if you're looking at a seal or sea lion, sometimes when you're out on the coast, all you see is just a little head popping out of the water and you might not be able to see a flipper or a back rotating hip. So then how do you know who you're looking at? Well, for this, you're gonna look on either side of our friend's heads. Now in the case of Wishbone and Little Sir, they both have little tiny ear flaps on either side of their head, right behind their eyes, similar to your ears and mine. And these are called pinnae. Now they have the same function that your ears and mine have, little tiny ear flaps. Now in the case of the seals, when you look at their head, you're not gonna see any ear flaps on either side of their head. Instead, you're gonna notice they have only a small hole. Now that small auditory hole, well, it still works just as well as everyone else's. They can still hear just as well as the sea lions do. The only difference is that they don't have any flaps on either side of their head. Now the most famous way to tell a seal apart from a sea lion is gonna be, well, their call. If you've ever been to the coast of California or if you have visited Sea Lion Cove before, you may have heard a loud roaring barking call. This loud, loud call from, comes from our sea lions like Wishbone and Little Sir. Now seals on the other hand, they don't have this loud call. Instead, their vocalization is very low and it sounds much more like a sneeze or a grunt. And the very last way to tell if you're looking at a seal or a sea lion, well, it's gonna be their teeth. In the case of seals, if they open their mouth and show you their teeth, you're gonna notice that a seal's teeth are very pearly white, just like yours and mine. In the case of sea lions, when they open their mouth and they show you their teeth, you're gonna notice that a sea lion's teeth are all black. Don't be worried, this is normal. Sea lions grow a special bacteria inside of their mouth that coats their teeth and it turns them black. And the special black coating works like built-in toothpaste for them. Now the same way that you and I brush our teeth every single day, one behavior that all of our friends here at Sea Lion Cove get to practice is, well, how to brush their teeth. Now you and I might like a minty flavored toothpaste or maybe a strawberry flavored toothpaste for the kids, while our seals and sea lions here, they love fish flavored toothpaste. Yum. Now, not only does everybody here get to practice how to brush their teeth, there's a lot of other behaviors that everybody here gets to learn and practice. For example, all the seals and sea lions at Sea Lion Cove know how to stand on a scale to check their weight, to see how heavy how, to see how heavy they are, to make sure that everyone is staying nice and healthy. Everyone knows how to hold still to have their body examined. They know how to show a belly in case they needed an ultrasound or even how to present just one flipper in case we, in case we needed to check any scrapes or bruises on them. All of these behaviors are called the husbandry behaviors, and husbandry is the first and most important reason for any training that you get to see throughout the zoo. And this is for animal health care. Now, one of the big responsibilities of all the zookeepers here with us is to make sure that we are taking care of the animals. And by training the animals to do husbandry behaviors, they are able to be active participants in their own checkups. And also by practicing throughout the day, they know that when it's time for a real checkup, there is nothing to be worried and they know exactly what to do. Now, the second reason for all the training that you see throughout the zoo is gonna be for physical and mental stimulation. The same way that you and I need daily exercise while all of our friends here need exercise too. So oftentimes throughout a training session, you'll get to see seals and sea lions swim quickly across the pool, move quickly on land, sometimes jump in and out of the water, which is called porpoising. And all of these behaviors help make sure that our friends here get all of the exercise and all of the movement that they need throughout their day. And of course, if you exercise somebody's body, you need to exercise somebody's brain. You and I can read a book, put together a puzzle, or maybe even just do our homework. Well, our friends here are gonna learn and practice a lot of different behaviors that are taught based on approximations, which is basically just baby steps. Our trainers will start off by teaching a behavior starting with the very basic building blocks and then every new behavior that they learn right after that is going to become just a little bit more complicated. But to keep everybody on their toes, they make sure to mix it up and practice old behaviors combined with new behaviors to make sure that all of our friends here are staying on their toes or on their flippers in this case. Now throughout our training session, you're gonna notice that all of our friends look like they are very friendly and training them looks like a lot of fun. Well, this is because our keepers and our animals work very closely every single day to build a relationship based on trust. Now, when you and I get to visit seals and sea lions out on the coast, it is important for us to remember that we are visiting wild animals and for your safety and theirs, we need to maintain a nice safe distance from everyone. The Marine Mammal Protection Act states that you and I, all the humans, have to stay 50 yards away from any seals, 
or sea lions or other marine mammals you run into out on the coast. Now the reason for this is that a lot of marine mammal moms are very protective of their young. If you stand a little bit too close to a pup, a mama may not return as she no longer feels safe. And then this pup is too young to know how to care for themselves and they can become stranded. So to make sure that they are staying safe and that you are also staying safe, we wanna make sure we're keeping a nice safe distance of 50 yards, half a football field, my friends, to make sure that everybody is staying safe. Now, another way that you can help keep all marine mammals and ocean life nice and safe is well by using your three R's, reduce, reuse and recycle in that order by making sure that you're reducing the amount of waste that you produce, reusing as many items as you can and recycling all items that can be recycled, we make sure that the least amount of our waste makes it out into the ocean. Now, unfortunately, a lot of things like single-use plastics or trash that is not disposed of correctly does float out into our oceans and well, our seal and sea lion friends, along with a lot of other marine life, well, their favorite, food to eat is seafood. And a lot of times when our trash floats around in the water, it may look like a fish or like a jellyfish or like another yummy animal that they might want to consume. And accidentally, they will eat this trash without knowing that it is not healthy for them. Now, the same way that you and I do not want to eat trash for lunch, we want to make sure that none of our seal or sea lion friends or other marine life are eating trash by accident. So by making sure that you are using your three R's at home, reduce, reuse, and recycle, you will make sure that the least amount of our waste makes it out into the oceans by accident. And of course, if you like seafood, well, let me tell you that my friends here, they also love seafood. Now, one of the best ways that you can help keep all of our friends here nice and safe make sure that everybody here has enough to eat out in the ocean is by consuming sustainable seafood. Now, what this means isn't to stop eating seafood at all. No, no, you can still have your fish sticks, you can still have your sushi, you can still eat your shrimp if that is what you would like. Seafood Watch is a program put together by our friends at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And by downloading this app onto your iPhone or Android, you will, able, you will be able to see the best sustainable food options. Now they are rated on a scale, very easy to use, red, yellow, and green. And our red options are the ones that you absolutely want to avoid. Yellow options are the ones that may have better alternatives and the green are the ones that are good to go. Now by making sure that you are consuming sustainable seafood, you will make sure that there is enough in the ocean for our friends and of course that there is enough for us. You will also make sure that any of the seafood that you are consuming isn't harming any other animals or ecosystems in the process of you and I getting to enjoy our yummy seafood. Now this includes sushi and fish sticks. If you like both of those items, well, you are still consuming seafood and it is always best to make sure that we are making a good sustainable choice to make sure that all of our friends have enough and that we can also enjoy it too. Now I wanna thank you all for joining me here at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo today. Again, my name is Karen. I am a conservation interpreter and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day.